doing all right today. Um, obviously excited to get get uh, get going and uh, play in the swamp this Saturday. Uh, you know, it's going to be great to be home, back to be in, in our home environment, playing in the swamp. There's no environment like it. Um, you know, and, and can't wait to see. I think one thing, uh, I, I think you saw it certain deals. I think uh, even though there's there's a limited capacity uh, at stadiums right now, fans can make a huge difference. So we need our, our uh, we need the Gator fans to. Uh, maximize I don't think we can pack the swamp but certainly maximize the what we can do in in the swamp on Saturday I know there's still tickets available for the game which is something that's a little bit different you know and unique I think there's a lot of people I've talked to out there like oh coach you know I mean it, it's just a shame I mean I, we're dying to come to games and we can't get tickets this year or or what the situation is so there's still tickets available so uh any all the Gator uh nation out there if you want to come to the game please contact you know get in touch with ticket office there's still tickets available for Saturday's game and as I said last week I think that's such a huge deal I mean to feel to be in the swamp on a Saturday in in uh I guess it'll be October now um uh, but uh, to be in the swamp on the on a Saturday in, in October feels normal, and uh, not I know life hasn't always felt normal the past six months. So come join us uh, uh, in the in the swamp this Saturday. Should be great for the for the uh, the first home game. Uh, what do you guys got? What do you want to know about? No, I, I think there's I think there's a lot of teachable moments. I think we'll be a lot better defensively come Saturday. Um, I, I think there's a lot you can see um, in what happened in that game and why we had some of our breakdowns. Uh, one, I don't, I don't want to take anything away from from Ole Miss. I think you know obviously we we when we were down some players uh, in game one playing an extremely up tempo offense and they do a really good job of getting their playmakers the ball. You know I mean if they got they got a couple guys that are, can do stuff with it and they they do a good job of making scheming those guys uh, to make sure they get the ball. Um, but I expect a much better defense. You know, I, I think normally, I think early in the season, everyone's like, okay, the defenses are great and the offenses are going to take a little time to catch up. You know, I think when you, when now, when you eliminate spring ball, okay, when you eliminate the amount of tackling that you've done uh, in this time, you expand this long training camp uh, with, with the limitations that we had in it. I think it's it's an advantage, possibly really, for the offense early. So I think that's what you're seeing. So I, I expect us to make a pretty big jump from week one to week two defensively, with uh, you know really with with tackling, with the effort, with running to the football, with communication, and making sure we're fitting everything properly. I, I think all of those things. Now that we're kind of in a game mode, uh, I expect us to be uh, be much better defensively this week. Well, you know, I, I think it certainly has something to do with it. You know what I mean? I think there's great explosive players, uh, but I certainly think that probably does have something to do with that 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 opportunity. You know, the guys could still throw and catch, right? Uh, they go out throw and catch on their own. You know, you got they they could do different things like that. We're able to have a ball at a walk through, so you can actually, you know, you, you could even though you're walking through, you can just throw it and catch it to somebody, and you, you get a little feel for the pass game that way. Um, with the walkthroughs that we had, you know what you what you missed was the defense fitting, tackling those things. So um, I, I think that will. I think it'll. I think it'll change as the season goes on. Yeah, I you know it was um, I don't know we created around it we had it in there, uh, but we know he's a mismatch out there on the field. So you know you kind of you kind of as you go pull different things and you're looking at your players. What do you expect to do well? Um, we look at the tight end position and we know we have some really good tight ends. Not just him, but the other ones that we feel comfortable with um, in the offense. And so you know it's a position when you have those guys that we want to try that we think are big advantageous matchups for us. Uh, 
we're going to try to use the the part of the offense that's going to you know highlight them maybe more than other years and uh um, you know, that's something we certainly spend a lot of time with in the offseason is making sure, um, you know, that we have enough ways that he's going to get the ball in his hands during the course of the game trying to create matchup problems for the defense. And then secondly, did you drink your bottle of wine yet? No, no, Coach, right? Huh? Listen. It was a uh, – right? I, I mean, Cassie's got a picture of it right there. You can see it. I see it in her background drop. It is. It is actually a bottle, and it is wine. So, coach. Hey, coach. I mean, he didn't miss a beat. He was in here the, he, this morning. First time I saw him, he had he had a bottle of wine for me right there. I, I called him out, I guess, and he brought it. So, Hey, I mean, that's one thing about having Coach Spurrier. I love having Coach Spurrier around because it's, you know what, it's uh, one, obviously, to have a football person like that around the building and around all the time is. But, I mean, I grew up a huge fan of him. And, and you know, I mean, very rarely is he not walk in the room and put a smile on everybody's face in our office. So. <laughs> Well, I, you know, there's a lot of things he can get better at. We went through on the film. I don't know if he, you know, if, if he likes the attention and the his name being on the ticker of ESPN and he likes that stuff, then keep doing what he's doing. If he doesn't go out, throw three picks. They won't talk about him anymore. So, uh, I don't know. That's kind of my take on it. I, I think, you know what, he's a guy that's worked really hard to put himself in this position. Uh the, he's been on the big stage. It's not too big for him, and I think he understands um, and and respects the position he's in and doesn't take it for granted. So I think that's going to be the biggest thing. I don't think you know he's going to look and say, "Hey, I, I don't know. Maybe I don't know that I have six touchdown passes every week. I, that'd be great if he does." And uh, but I, I think most importantly, him is is he's doing his job managing the, the game, making good decisions, putting us in the right plays, getting the ball out of his hands faster and being accurate. You know, that's the stuff that he worries about. Just like before, you know, I mean, he, he, he never came in and worried about being the starter. He wanted to be the starter, but he wasn't worried about it. He was worried about improving and getting better. And so now that he's the starter, I think uh, I expect more of the same from him of just worried about improving and getting better. Uh, it sounds about right. That's because Brian Johnson, you know, once you make him the coordinator right there, we start, you know, as he said, if he said, if you let me call my own plays when I was playing for you, I would have had six touchdowns all the time. I'd throw it every play. So uh, <laughs> I think that that helps a lot. I'm probably a little bit more run heavy and, and he's a little more pass heavy. So we, we end up throwing the ball a little bit more. I think it's great. I think it's, and I think, you know what, a lot of the credit goes to him with the decisions he made and where he went with the ball, how fast he made those decisions, uh, you know, um, and to get it, and how to get it to the right player. Uh, I think he knows we have a lot of confidence in him throwing the ball, and I, I, it does say a lot about him. I've had some pretty good quarterbacks through the years, so that's a, uh, that's a pretty, pretty unique deal. I, I would bet I don't think I've had anybody throw for six. I think Timmy had seven against. Uh, this right, but he didn't throw for all seven. I think he accounted for seven in one game. But all right, if he would have thrown that ball a little quicker to, to Trent Whitmore, he would have had seven. Well, you know, I'm biased to those guys, right? I mean, I, I was a I was a quarterback and a tight end, really, in my football career. So, you know, I mean, then you wonder why our quarterback threw six touchdowns and four of them to our tight end. I'm just biased against to those guys, I guess, is what it must be. But uh, the uh, no, I think I think in football, I think you you look at 
one of the things we've always tried to do is try to create advantageous matchups, right? And, you know, I mean, you, you just, just go through the years of different guys I've had. And, uh, you know, it used to be a big zone read team. And then all of a sudden you have a, a Chris Rainey and a Jeff Demps with a Tebow. And you just run the reverse zone read. Then those guys run outside. Tebow pounds away inside. Uh, you have a Percy Harvin. How, how are you getting him in space, right? Uh, to go make plays. You have a Dak Prescott. Are you building your offense around what he does well for, and, and change from one year to the next and, you know, not not kind of box yourself in? So, uh, to me, I think it's all it's really about having enough offensive system that can highlight players, right? I mean, we've had years, we've had a bunch of years, we've had 1,000-yard rushers and, and uh, uh you know, but how do you build your offense around being able to highlight players and then pick and choose and make sure you're putting them in a position to do that and play to their strengths? And uh, that's what we've always tried to do. Well, it's a lot. We had a lot of guys play defense and special teams. Uh, obviously, it's a long season. There's a chance this could be a season like no other. You know what I mean? I don't know who's going to be available from week to week. Um, and so, you know, when you look at those things, when that there's a possibility that happened, you, you know, it, it's probably more than next man up mentality as a regular season, regular year would be. Uh, so it's great to get guys reps, to get them out there, to get them that experience on the field. And, uh, you know, I talk to the guys, you know, I, you, you never know how many reps you're going to get and reps are valuable, but you better make sure that, that you're ready uh, for when your number's called, that you've prepared the right way to be ready to go make plays during the course of the game. So uh, it was great to, to get guys reps, get guys out on the field, and because and, you don't know how much we're going to need them as the year goes on. Oh, you're still muted there, Gene. You're muted. There you go. Uh, I know it's just a one-game sample size with Ole Miss, and a lot of people are going to make a lot of snap judgments on this offense and Kyle and what and what have you. Uh, but do you see elements of this offense being able to be explosive on a consistent basis? It, did, it didn't really happen for Coach Spurrier until his like fifth or sixth. Um, but we were on Saturday. We'll see how we do this Saturday. I don't I don't know about it. I want to just see us execute and get better from week to week. And um, do we have components? Yes, because we have explosive players in the offense. We have guys that are explosive players. Uh, so when you have those, when you have guys that can make big plays happen, it gives you opportunity to have a much more explosive offense. Uh, the uh, So I, I think it certainly has the potential to be. Uh, from week to week, but there's, you know, like I said, I also think, I think defenses, uh, unlike normal years where kind of the offenses pick up as the year goes on, I think it's going to go the opposite way, and I think defenses will start catching up quicker. Uh, so I think that you'll see the bigger stats earlier in the year offensively rather than late this year more than in normal years. As a follow-up, how, uh, how much can we also attribute this to, to a more experienced offensive line? Well, I think I think it helps. Uh, I think you know there there are certain things that help. You know, one we have a little bit of a, a veteran offensive line. Two, we played an SEC road game, uh, where even though there was it was good, there was good people in the crowd. There was this. Usually, when you're playing on the road in the league, it's deafening. You can't hear a thing. Uh, you saw that in the NFL. I, I don't know. I, uh, I I right when I, I I think I was leaving the office last night and I saw um, Aaron Rodgers. Like I've been mean, I had the TV on the background. Like Aaron Rodgers in. New Orleans using snap count to get them to jump off sides. You know, I mean, they've they probably they've never used. I'm sure no one's ever used snap count in in New Orleans, the visiting team before. So um, there's certain uh, offensive advantages to those things uh, that you have just because of circumstances this year. And one of them, obviously, having a veteran quarterback helps. A veteran offensive line certainly helps. Um, as you have to make in-game adjustments and then just game mechanics, you know, I mean, it, it, it makes it's a little bit easier this year with not having to deal with with massive crowds on the road.
That's why every gator matters this weekend to make it as loud as we possibly can for South Carolina. Oh, he wasn't waiting for us. He came in. I think he, you know, he comes in, gets his workout, checks on different things. But uh, when he came down, he has his office. But I saw him walking by, so I, I made, you know, when he walked, we, I, uh, it was probably, I don't know, right before I, right before I, 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 we tweeted, got the picture, and then tweeted it out. So, um, but but you know, he he'll come by. Um, the uh, you know he'll come by, make some. You know, have 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 some thoughts on on different things and football thoughts for us, um, and and I, I just love it. I mean, it's just it's always good that you know you have somebody there. I don't. I mean, since I've been here, I mean, he's he's a guy that comes in and says is is not judgmental. Um, not. I mean, I think as everybody knows, he's not afraid to give you advice on different things or give you his mind or speak his mind or give you thoughts, but always does so in a very, to me, in a positive, constructive, helping way as a coach. Is, um, so I, I think it is great to have somebody like that around that just sticks his head at him every once in a while to, uh, you know, to give his thoughts on what's going on. Oh yeah, he'll come. He'll drop some plays for us now. He's got a bunch of plays, so he'll. Uh, what's that? Well, yeah, we. I mean, we called the ones. We called one of them. But you know, last he'd come in. Usually, it's not always as much during the season. Sometimes off season, you know, he'll review stuff and said, "Hey, we've run this before. We've run that before." Um, you know, heck, we put the one of them in last year. We ran a bunch of times. It's called Spurrier. So because he gave it to us, so we called it Spurrier and put it in. Uh, I'm not. I can't give you away our play call names, but okay. it was obviously it was a pass play, not a running play. You could, I mean, I'm sure you guessed that part of it. So. Well, I, th- I think one, he had he had a great deal of tackles. I think he plays so hard. He's the great leader of the defense. I think last year, you know, he's a, a, really a first-time starter. This year, I think he understands that he's expected to be the leader of the defense. And he does that every single day. I think it's a great learning for all of our players uh, out there is, you know, I mean, you watch him practice and you watch how he prepares, how hard he practices, how he prepares to be in the right position. You know, I mean, just his attention to detail in everything he does at practice, and then you see that translate over to the game. So, you know, that's not just that he's a vocal leader and, and going to talk up and get guys going, but he's also going to back it up with his actions. And you know what? I mean, you watch how he practices, how he performs every day on the field. It translates to seeing a guy being able to go out and have a huge game like he did on Saturday. And real quick, last thing for me. You mentioned that the defense will obviously get better because of how weird the offseason was. So do you think that Kyle's performance and the offense – Well, I think it's you know I think it's a little bit of having veteran players. You know they're still able to throw and catch, uh, so you're a little bit ahead. But I hope we certainly continue to improve offensively. You know we don't we didn't come out to peak in week one. You know I mean there's I, I expect the offense to get better. I just think the curve is going to be quicker for the defense um, as the season goes on and we start playing more football. Well, they, I mean, they kill, they, they kill or extend drives, you know what I mean? Um, and we put a lot on it, right? One of the, our, our one big thing, you know, was that going into game one, it was a lot of the focus not as much on Ole Miss on ourselves and handle game mechanics offensively. You know, could we come out there, execute, and handle being back on game day Saturday? Uh, 
And obviously, the you know, you look at the Sean penalty was big early. But, uh, but you know, I mean, we really didn't have many penalties the whole game, like you said. So uh, I think that was something that we attributed to. We, we talked a lot about going into game one. Uh, you know, we, we hadn't watched their offense or defense play. They had a whole new coaching staff. So, you know, a lot of our focus and intention had to be on ourselves. And could we execute? Could we handle that transition into game week? And offensively, we did uh, with, with not many penalties. And defensively, with the exception of the, you know, the targeting, which is a tough call. I mean, the guys running over the middle I think Sean tried to throw the shoulder in there and and you know guys are lower and catching the ball and you know we talk about it all the time and it's you know it's kind of a bang bang play and it's it's, it's tough that that happened um you know I don't, I don't think there was intent there at all in any way shape or form <clears throat> so it's just an uh, one of those you know things that you try to coach and try to get out of the game and and um you know and keep the game as safe as possible so uh even with that one overall I think we were pretty clean on the day penalty wise Yeah, it is. I mean, it helps having some older players, but it's something we really talked about of paying attention to, you know, going into the week, you know, is, hey, we might not have as much research on this team as we have on other teams. So let's really focus on our execution of doing everything perfectly uh, going into the game. Well, I think he I think he played really well. I thought the offensive line as a whole played really well. And I think, you know, a lot of times that, that ends up almost being a, a team award. Um, I know it, it goes to the individual. Uh, and I give Brett a lot of credit. I mean, obviously very well deserving. Had a great game. Uh, having to, you know, go go in and, and you know, jump in at center. He's a guy who was going to place either center or guard for us to be able to do both. Had to be forced to play at center. Um, you know, and, and came in and, and did a great job of it. And so uh, obviously very deserving of that. Uh, you know, I think, you know, you look, there weren't, weren't a lot of mistakes up front. As the game went on, I think we made some good adjustments to what they were doing to uh, run the ball even more efficiently than we did early in the game. And uh, and a lot of that goes on the center. Uh, but but overall, I thought the, the line as a whole played well. And, and, you know, he is the center of that line. is kind of that focal point. He's the apex of the line. So, um, you know, I'm glad he was able to get get the recognition for that. That was great. I think, you know, obviously not have missing the offseason hurts too uh, a little bit, and I, I expect him to continue to get better. Um, you know, and I saw a couple ups and downs, and but I mean, and I, I, the one thing I think he knows of having – played for me before is I have pretty high standards and expectations so it's, it's that's not going to shock him um, but overall I thought I mean he graded the champion I thought he played pretty well Always, you know, but I think everybody saw that. I think, you know, Malik last year still was, I, I don't want to say wasn't 100%, but I, 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 you know, just in his total performance wasn't. But, I mean, that was the guy that I saw. You saw both running and catching the ball uh, on Saturday. And, um, you know, I think every, a lot of times you look at the, the rushing or the running back stats, and, you know, if you combine our three running backs, if we had just, you know, to just play one, pr really pretty good day for the backs. You know, if that if that was one back, but you know, I like to roll those guys through some, uh, keep some fresh. As I say, this is going to be a unique year uh, for us, and to get guys experience. And and you know, we those guys play a bunch on special teams as well. And um, you know, to create depth with within the team, it was good to get all those guys in the game. And I, I was pleased with how Malik played, and uh, I thought Pierce ran the ball hard. It was great to get Naquan some real game reps out there, and uh, did a really nice job catching the ball out of the backfield. Yeah, that, that's what it is. I think that's what we weren't seeing last year, you know, some is, is that explosiveness and that make you miss and foot in the ground and change the direction. Uh, and I think you, you're seeing that now again. I love it. He told, he said it to me again this morning. I love it. So I, I as, as soon as I saw it, I, I was laughing. I mean, I couldn't. I mean, it was it was awesome. And then uh, going back to Brian, obviously his his debut as the OC, he said the you know, he said things wouldn't change much 
was. I know you did as well, but how do you feel like he did with those responsibilities officially the first time? Well, I th obviously did a really good job, right? I mean, I, I, I was the OC here, and we never had that many yards or touchdown passes, so I guess he did better than I did. So. <laughs> Was it Wyoming? Yeah. yeah. I mean, officially, I know you, I'm sure you called plays at Utah, but when you came here, you were OC, you were officially OC. Yeah. Um, I know. I know we won. <laughs> no, it was. Yeah, Wyoming was pretty tough, though. That was our first game. We were learning a lot about it. We we were learning a lot about ourselves back then. So uh, learning about how to run the offense and how to adjust it and what we're doing. And um, you know, we're coming off a year at U. You know, just all new players. You know, your first when you don't know. Uh, I, I do remember this. I remember you know you knew your team at Utah kind of inside and out. You came here, you got in the games, and uh, during that course of the year, we tweaked some different things within our offense as we got to kind of more familiar with everybody. Well, I mean, you know, they they have some they they have some length out there. They have some long corners and and some big safeties. So uh, they're gonna have probably some athletes that they can match up with them. You know, it's in the, you know they're big man. They like to play a lot of man coverage. So you're gonna get those one on one matchups, and it's just about trying to create uh, the best matchup we can. I think they uh, they got a very talented front. You know, they they have some veteran guys uh, that are starters, and then some really. You know, a bunch of five-star guys uh, that they've recruited over the last couple of years. So, a um, very, very talented front as well. So, um, you know, I mean, it would be a big challenge. I mean, every, one, every time it's this, this game, uh, each of the last two years has kind of come right down to the end. And uh, so we got to be ready to go play for play for four quarters. That's good. I thought you were going to get into the debate tomorrow night or something like that and when you started talking about voting. But <laughs> I won't put the pressure on you there. Yeah. Uh, anyway, just, just the hybrid position. Uh, it seems to be working extremely well. I know this is really been any question, but why is it so hard to cover? What strength do you well, I, I think one. I think when you look that he's a tight end, you know, I mean, um, but if you go look at, at that, it is about the mismatches. I mean, he, he's he got the size. So, you know, when a DBs are on him, a lot of times you see he can go over the top of you as a, a, and go over the top of DBs. He can run away from backers. Uh, he's got tremendous athletic ability to go catch the ball. And, and from, you know, as I think everybody saw, I mean, he's, he's really developed much better as a blocker this offseason. So, um, you know, when you combine those things defensively, you know, who, who do you put on him? You know what I mean? It's like, you know, we, we talked, he, he's kind of a unicorn, right? I mean, so unless you have a unicorn on defense to match the unicorn on offense, right? I mean, you got to have a guy that can kind of, you know, that, that there's not a lot of them out there. They're kind of very, very rare to ever see one that – you know, do you have a, you know, a six foot four, two hundred and forty pound linebacker that can run with him? You know, or do you have a, you know, a six three and a half, two twenty safety that's physical as he is at the point of attack? And so that's really what makes him a mismatch. And and but I mean, you see it. It's not anything that's new. I mean, but you know, you're watching Kelsey and you're watching Kittle and you're watching Gronkowski. You're watching all these guys uh, do this. Um, you know, um, the the all throughout the 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 NFL. I mean, it goes all the you know goes back to, you know, um, so like uh, you know whether it's. Um, or some of the other guys. I mean, there's a bunch of them that have been doing it for years in the NFL that they're just mismatch problems. And I think, you know, one of the things that coaches are doing are just trying to create those matchups. And you know what? If I, if I can put him in space and make the matchup better than putting him in tight, well, I'm going to put him in space to create that little bit more room for him to work and, and make the matchup even better and more in our advantage. Last year, 
Well, I think I think you know one thing. Kyle does a good job. He's going to put the ball where the defense isn't. You know, whether he's got to go over the top or whether he's got to put it on the back shoulder. Uh, also, his just experience, the sliding in the pocket, the scrambling, the moving. And then you look at the receivers. You know, when we do that, the ability for them to kind of find the windows. Uh, you know, as he's sliding to his right, hey, I might break off my route and slide to the right with him and get in a window for him to throw it. Um, and I think that does. That comes from experience, not just from those two, but all our guys that have played some played a bunch of football. Well, it, you know, it, what, what's, what's tricky is it's, you know, it can be changing. You know what I mean? So you kind of have a you have a, a Monday roster, uh, you know, then you got kind of a Thursday roster um, that you expect to bring into the game, and then you kind of have a Friday roster, you know, if you got to go to the bullpen. Um, and, you know, you're trying to manage it throughout the week and, and balance to make sure however it plays out, uh, that we're ready to go play a game on Saturday. And so uh, a lot that goes into it. You know, our roster was honestly was decided on, on uh, Friday morning, you know, really actually Thursday night at about 10 o'clock last week. Uh, you know, we, we, we got somewhat set on the roster. Uh, but, you know, there there's still changes all the way into Saturday So uh, for us that, that we had to make. So uh, it's the way it is. It's just a different year. You know, I mean, unlike the, I, we don't have, unfortunately, I don't have free agency to get on the call, the phone real quick and get somebody in here. So, uh, you know, we're, we're managing with what we have and trying to balance it as best we can. Well, I, I, I think, you know, one of the things is that, that, you know, you have guys that probably, you know, are, are just taking reps on the offense or defense having to go down and play scout team because your numbers are down, right? And so those guys that maybe, you know, are limited rep guys on offense or defense are now on the scout team, and they got to get those reps either in walkthrough or in film session to get ready to play. So um, that is a little bit different for us this, this year too. And it, you know what? For us to have a successful year, it's going to take a lot of unselfish guys on this team. You know, a lot of guys buying into doing, hey, I'm, I'm here to do whatever it takes to help the team win. Uh, you know, and, and as long as we keep that attitude, we'll have a chance to be successful. If selfishness starts to creep in and guys are worried about themselves, uh, it's going to be harder to manage because, you know, the guys are like, hey, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do this. I, that's, I, I don't, I, I don't want to do what it takes for the team to win. We'll have a lot of problems. Well, I mean, they got they got some really good players. It's it's unique. The other quarterback, you know, has come in and he's a veteran within this system. Even though it was his first start for them last week, he's played within the system. Uh, I think so. He knows the the system they're running, decision making they do. They have a couple good backs. Uh, they get the ball too. They got you know they got some wideouts. They always do a good job of create of having some wideouts and creating matchup issues. Uh, with those wideouts to try to take advantage of the guys and, and, you know, try to get their same thing, similar thing to what we do is try, try to get their talented guys in the best advantageous one-on-one -on -one matchup they can, that, that, that they can. And so um, even though uh, it is, you know, I mean, you look at their quarterback position, I think is the big one that they have a guy that's a veteran in the system and the guy on the bench that started for him last year. So they have some experience there to come out and, and make plays and be comfortable within what they're doing. All right. Thank you guys. Have a good week.